behind the shades. We cannot sacrifice those things for the betterment of any other person. Because the more you sacrifice yourself and what's important to you and what makes you grow and bloom as a person, the less that you are able to give and to do for those that you care about. And love is not a word. Love isn't, love isn't a word that sounds pretty so someone can weaponize it against you to get what they want from you. Love is in the way people treat you. Love is patience. Love is kindness. Love is respectful. It's, it's not jealous or boastful. Love isn't proud. Love doesn't rejoice in taking advantage of another person. It rejoices in truth. Those are all things that we can wake up every day and make a conscious decision to show the people we interact with. And if they can't show you that, then, then don't allow them in your space. Don't, don't let them take up space in your bubble. But it all begins with showing all of those things to ourselves. I mentioned this to someone where as children, we're taught how to speak, but not how to communicate. We're taught how to hear, but not to listen. We are taught how to say love, but we don't, we're not taught how to show it or understand it. And it's interesting that so many of us will learn that at different parts in our life. Some in maybe in their 20s or 30s or 40s, or some will never learn it at all. Because the simplest approach is just to say the three words, I love you. The more adult approach and the more complicated or more complex would be to show it. Because you can go months without hearing the words, I love you. But when you ask someone, does this person love you? You can answer yes, because they treat me this way. They do this for me. They provide this. And I think it has become lost because we rather be satisfied immediately and fleeting. I love you. I love you. I love you. Versus it being long-term saying that, man, this person that I'm with, look at all the happiness they've surrounded me with. Look at how they've impacted my life in a positive way. You can have a friend that shows you how much they love you as a friend. And that's more impactful and stronger than someone that you're married to. That's someone that you're dating. Because you know, as soon as that person reaches out to you, you can feel the overflowing love. Whereas the person that we're living with, we're like, man, if only they knew how much I wanted them to show the type of love that would make me just smile for the rest of my life. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. And one lesson I can say that I have learned is that um, no matter how hard you try and no matter how much you you love someone, if they you can't love anyone into loving you back. If if they don't know how to love you or if, if they just don't care enough to put forth that effort, you you can't stay around and let them suck the life out of you because all you're proving is that you're not loving yourself. When you're giving so much of yourself and not getting anything in return, it's, I mean, what good is that? What good, what good is that to anybody? I mean, I know there's something to be said for being steadfast and having long suffering and for, for being there and honoring a commitment or whatever, but the commitment's already in, and the promise is already broken when that person stops honoring their side of it. And there's no shame in walking away and doing what's best for yourself. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, I think that I know how hard it is, you know, for people, you know, the financial part of things that, that the trauma bond, everything that keeps you tied to an abusive situation. But I, I'm, I am living proof that it is possible. I've done things that I never thought I could do. And so this thing, it's this big compared to the mountain that I've climbed.